limits at infinity. Well, we're interested in limits at infinity because they often involve horizontal asymptotes. And so here's what the definition of horizontal asymptote is. It says that the line y equals L, that's a horizontal line, is a horizontal asymptote if the graph of some function f is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals L, or the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x equals L. So what does that gobbledygook mean, graphically speaking? OK, so let's say I've got some function here, some function f, all right? And f is doing that. Well, if f of x is approaching L as x gets really, really big, then we say we've got a horizontal asymptote. And it could also be happening in going in the negative infinity direction as well. So I could have it going like that. Here's y equals L. And now x is approaching negative infinity. So as x gets really, really big going in that direction, going in the negative direction, the graph is getting closer and closer to L. And here's an important point. It's fine for a function to cross a horizontal asymptote. It can jump up and down, but if it seems to be approaching it closer and closer as x gets large, then we say that it's a horizontal asymptote. Okay, but with a vertical asymptote, the graph can't ever cross that. Horizontal asymptote is fine. Okay, let's do some examples. Um, if r is a positive rational number and c is any real number, then this is a really handy thing to remember. The limit as x approaches infinity of x to the r, and this is going to be infinity or negative infinity, either one, the limit of c over x to the r equals 0. So in other words, if I have a constant on top and my denominator is going to infinity or negative infinity, that whole fraction is going to end up being 0. OK? So let's check this out. What's going on here? Well, I've got the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 5x minus 2 over 3x. So let's split that up. We'll do the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 5x over 3x. minus the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2 over 3x. OK, so over here, my x's cancel. I get 5 thirds. And here, this is matching this situation here. I have a constant over x. And as x approaches negative infinity, this whole thing is going to go to 0. So our answer is? 5 thirds. OK, let's take a look at this. Now, here's a nice little trick. If I've got a rational function and I've got uh, x's and being raised to powers, try dividing every term by the highest degree x term. So I'm going to divide everything by x squared. So I get the limit as x approaches infinity. And you know what? I don't know why this is always negative infinity. Let's make that positive infinity just to be interesting. So I'm going to divide everything by x squared. So I get 2x squared over x squared plus 8 over x squared over 3x squared divided by x squared minus 1 over x squared. OK. So those cancel, those cancel. And as x approaches infinity, 8 over x squared is going to go to 0. And 1 over x squared is going to go to 0. And so all I have left is 2 over 3. OK, let's do the same thing over here. I'm going to divide everything by x cubed now. 
So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x squared over x cubed plus 7 over x cubed divided by 4x cubed over x cubed minus 9 over x cubed, which is going to equal the limit as x approaches negative infinity. OK, x squared over x cubed is 1 over x squared. 7 over x cubed is 7 over x cubed. That's going to be 4. And that's going to be 9 over x cubed. Now comes the fun part. That goes to 0. That goes to 0. That stays at 4. That's gone to 0. And I get 0 over 4, which is 0. OK, and then this last one right here, divide everything by x to the fifth. Let's see if we can do this in our head. We'll make this a positive infinity again, just to be different. It doesn't really matter if you're going to negative infinity or positive infinity when you're doing these. Dividing everything by x to the fifth, that's going to be 1 plus 7 over x cubed divided by 2 over x squared plus 1 over x to the fourth. Hmm. Let's see what we've got going here. 1 is 1. That's 0. That's 0. That's 0. I get 1 over 0. Uh-oh. We say that does not exist. OK? So I hope you noticed some patterns there. When the degree was the same, I ended up getting 5 thirds. Degree the same, I ended up getting 2 thirds. When the degree in the denominator was greater, I got 0. Hang on a minute. Pull this down here. As you can see, I got 0. And when the degree on the top was greater, I got does not exist, or infinity. So let's apply those rules so we can quickly figure these out. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the limit is 0. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, don't need that, equal to the degree of the denominator, then the limit is the ratio of the leading coefficients. And if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then the limit does not exist. OK, so here we go. We're going to do these really quick now. Same degree, so guess what? It equals the leading coefficients, which is 1 third. OK, now here, this degree is greater than, because it's actually the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x over 2 minus 4 over x squared. Well, this piece is going to go to 0, but that piece does not exist. So this does not exist. And over here, this is degree 1. And if I take the square root of x squared, that's going to be a degree 1. So it's actually the same degree, and you get 2. And that's pretty much it for limits at infinity.